Let's talk about one of the trickiest little pieces of punctuation. And what I mean is that little comma. So we're going to talk about commas and comma splices, the most common punctuation error among students, not just among students, among writers in general, are errors around the appropriate use of commas. Now part of that is because nobody really 100% agrees on the rules around commas, or at least not on all of the rules around commas. And typically the advice that we're given around where and when to use commas is um, this kind of sense that you use a comma to indicate a pause or a breath in a sentence. And that is true, but it's not particularly helpful if what you want is to master some of the rules. And so there are a few very concrete places where one must use a comma um, and where you want to avoid using a comma because it's then a comma splice. These few places where commas are necessary at the end of an introductory phrase, before a coordinating conjunction joining two independent clauses, so a coordinating conjunction is but or and or however joining two independent clauses, which are clauses which can be sentences on their own, when separating items in a list and when setting aside parenthetical modifiers. So those are some of the top rules that we don't have much wriggle, wiggle room around when it comes to comma usage. Now, the big thing that we want to make sure that we're watching out for is to not use a comma to join independent clauses together. So that's called a run-on sentence. So sometimes um, teachers or instructors, they may indicate that something is a run-on sentence. And we tend to think, oh, a run-on sentence means that I'm running on and on and on and my sentence is too long. But a run-on sentence is a technical term that refers to a sentence that has been inappropriately punctuated. So there isn't appropriate end stop punctuation or at least a semicolon to join two independent clauses. And so knowing when and how to use a comma is also going to indicate when and how to avoid comma splices and run-on sentences. So let's look at some examples for these top rules. So if we say number one, use a comma separating elements in a list. I like to eat apples, bananas, and oranges. And this little one right here after bananas and before the and is known as the Oxford comma. So there are tons of debates about whether or not you do need that comma before the and in a list. Um, it's called the Oxford comma if you do. And I, for one, think that yes, 100%, you do need that comma to indicate that you're continuing the list and not adding other modifiers into the grammatical sentence structure. If it's called the Oxford comma, if it's good enough for Oxford, it's good enough for us. The next rule, use a comma to set aside a parenthetical modifier. So a parenthetical modifier, parentheses, it's like brackets. So something that's not crucial to the grammar of the sentence, but can be put aside in parentheses. So my brother, comma, comma, spilled his drink. So you see how the grammar of the sentence, if we put parentheses, parenthetical commas around that modifying descriptor, about the brother. My brother spilled his, bring, his drink is a sentence. Brother is the subject, spilled is the verb. His drink is the object of that verb. That silly boy describes the brother. So it's an adjectival clause. You don't have to worry about that. What you do need to worry about is that because it sits outside of the grammar of the sentence, it can be separated with commas as a parenthetical modifier. So my brother, that silly boy, spilled his drink. Use a comma when joining two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction. This is this whole avoid the comma splice thing. I like to read, but I love to write. So this word here, but, is our coordinating conjunction. A conjunction is a word that has the power to glue two parts of a sentence together, and but is one of those words in it creates that logical connection between the first independent clause and the second independent clause. So we've got our comma in front of that indicating 
that these are two independent clauses joined with a nice little coordinating conjunction. Use a comma after an introductory phrase. So again, upon opening the door is a modifier that describes when the actual action of the sentence takes place. She saw a bear in her living room. So she is the subject, saw is the verb, and what did she see? She saw a bear. Where did she see it? In her living room. And when did she see it? That phrase, upon opening the door, at the beginning of the sentence is an introductory phrase. So we have a comma separating it from the main grammar of the sentence. So those are your four rules. Use a comma separating items in a list. Use a comma to set aside a parenthetical modifier or some descriptive language that isn't crucial to the sentence as a whole. Use a comma when joining two independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction like and or but and use a comma after an introductory phrase. Those are some of the top rules to use commas correctly.